Y'all see how Instagram hated on me? <laughs> Thank you guys for coming back. Just straight up cut off. So I got off my Wi-Fi. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't do that again. Thank you. Thank you for the hearts. Um, yeah, so what I was saying, I was talking about Jay-Z and I was talking about how he put in a new trademark in February of 2020 for his name, Jay-Z, although he's been out since, you know, the, you know, the 90s. Um, he, he actually trademarked his name first in 2000 for all of his, um, you know, his music and his entertainment. But now recently in 2020, he, he, he added a whole bunch of different things that are totally unrelated to what he's known for, like, you know, houseware, floor coverings, all this other stuff, um, including like knives and furniture, etc. So what I was saying is that he's probably working on some sort of licensing deal. Hey, <laughs> So he's probably working on some sort of licensing deal. And um, what that is, is that when you want to kind of make money off of your trademark, so you own a brand, your brand has built some sort of equity, so it means something, right? Your name ring, rings bells. And now you want, you know, he's protected it. And now that it has some value, he can now um, license it to other people so that they can, you know, so that he can make money from it. They could use it because they probably know the markets that they're in. So we know that Jay-Z is not an expert in, or at least we would assume he's not an expert in rugs and for floor coverings and um, knives and furniture and all that stuff. But he may connect with somebody who is an expert and who has, you know, the manufacturing and has the ability to provide those things. So if that's the case, now he can license his name, which is lend his name to them or lease his name to them or rent his name to them you know, um, in order to now make some money off of it, you know, have another, yet another stream of income. So, um, so yeah, so if you guys have questions about trademarks, just put them, you know, put them in and I'll try to um, get to them. I'm kind of, I'm going to go over, over some of the basics about trademarks. And if you, you know, if you have questions, you can jump in. I'll try to pay attention to the questions. But first, I have to tell you my disclaimer, which is that all the things that I say today is for information only, and you shouldn't consider it as legal advice unless you hire me to represent you to you know, file a trademark or advise you on anything like that. So I have to say that because according to the bar who gives me my, my law license, they think that if I don't tell you that, then you're gonna think I'm your lawyer. So, <laughs> so I'm letting you know that. So take it as information only. So I'm going to talk about, you know, what a trademark is. Um, the, what, I'll kind of give you a little overview of what intellectual property is because you might hear about trademarks, patents, and copyrights. And a lot of people, when, when I have con consultations, they'll say, I want to copyright my name. And I'm like, no, you want to trademark your name. <laughs> But um, so it's because there's so much information out there. And although there's a lot of information out there, it still is confusing if you're not somebody who's familiar with this area of the law. So I'm going to kind of break it down a little bit. You know, feel free to jump in. I'm trying not to make it too um, lawyerly for you. <laughs> All right. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the difference. We'll talk about your trademark name versus your business name because that causes a lot of confusion. We'll talk about your trademark name versus your website because that causes a lot of confusion. These are all um, different things. And then I'll try to run you through the trademark process if we have some time. I'm trying to keep it to a hot 45, okay? So if we could do that, um, if we could do that, that would be cool. So, all right. So types of intellectual property, which is assets of your mind, right? So it's something that you created. Oh, hey. <laughs> One of my clients is in the comments. Yes, I am working on your trademark and it's going well. Um, so yeah, so so trademarks, um, intellectual property is assets of your mind. So it's something that you created with your mind, your creativity, you thought of it, you dreamed it, you came up with it. And typically with all of the areas of intellectual property, which is patents, trademarks, copyrights, you have to fix it so that somebody could see it, right? Or somebody could perceive it. So with your trademark, it's gonna be the source of you, right? You want the public to know that this thing that I, that I created is coming from me or coming from my company. So that is um, something that you fixed, right? You've either wrote a name or you created a logo, they could see that. A patent 
is a is like an invention is really the most close um created the most closely um definition of a patent is that it's an invention right so it's something that's new that's different that was created and so you are either finding a completely new way to do things that that's something that was already existed you're finding a completely way to do it or you're creating something new right so that's what a patent is and it's it's a pretty technical process you actually need a separate license to do patent law so it's not something that i cover but i know enough about it to tell you what it's not right <laughs> so if you come to me for a patent i can say oh, that's not something that I do. I know that that thing is a patent that you need or you might want to talk to a patent attorney for that. Um, and then we have copyright. So copyright is um, it's pretty much an expression of typically a writing. So if you have a book, you're going to want to get your book copyrighted, right? You want to protect the expression of the words, the stories that you wrote. So if you have a book, you, you're going to want to get that copyrighted. If you have um, a movie you wrote a movie script, you want to go ahead and get that copyrighted because you want to protect that so no one else kind of copies copies off of you. If you want to, one interesting thing is if you created a dance. So a dance could be, um, you know, recorded, obviously, so people could see it and you could protect that with a copyright so no one else could do it. So now all these young people coming out with all these different dances and they're going viral and then, um, they're putting them in movies and video games. I think the, the video game Fortnite actually got sued because one of the people created one of the dances in the in the game. And obviously the game is making all this money off of it, but the person who created it is not, you know, um, is not banking off of it. And so that's a problem. So we want, I want to put this information out there so people know that if you created something and you think it's just a thing and going viral is cute, but <laughs> it should be tied to some dollars, okay? Especially if somebody else is making money off of it. So those are like the three different areas of intellectual property. We just break that down into trademarks, copyrights, and patents. So today I'm really just going to focus on trademarks, but I want you to have an idea of... Um, Hey guys, well, you guys are waving at me. I appreciate you. Um, I want you to have a, an idea of what the difference uh, of those are. So when it comes to trademarks, like what exactly is that? I don't know if anybody's confused about that, but I'll just go into it a little bit. A trademark is really going to be like a word. It's going to be like a slogan. So like, for instance, um, I'll start with give you like a, an apparel brand, Adidas. Like everybody knows Adidas. So the name Adidas is their word mark, right? That's how we know that those sneakers are theirs. So we know that, you know, that sweatsuit or whatever it is, is theirs, is by the name. So that's their word mark. So it could be a word. It could be a slogan. Actually, Adidas has a slogan that I had no idea of. So they're not doing really good with that slogan. <laughs> but it goes, um, Adidas is all in. That's their slogan. So they may have you know, it on a shirt or they may have it with their name, um, with their name Adidas and they'll have the slogan underneath it like Adidas is all in or, you know, whatever the case is. But that would be an example of a phrase. A phrase is also a slogan. And if that represents your company where you're allowing people to now, where you're wanting people to know that when you see this slogan, that's me and you're presenting it to the public like that, then that is that could be protected as a slogan and that falls under trademark. So it could also be, which is not very common, it could be a color. So one company that I know that has a color trademark is um, Tiffany's. So everybody knows that Tiffany blue box, their bags, everything um, is blue. You know, that baby blue or I think it's like Robin's egg, Robin's egg blue is their color. And, um, but you have to, that's a little bit more, um, you have to be a little bit more established to get a color mark because you first have to prove that the public knows that that's me, right? They know that that color belongs to Tiffany's. We wouldn't know that if Tiffany's just came out, right? And the same with Louboutins. Louboutins um, apply for a trademark for the red bottom of their shoes and they got it because everybody knows that, you know, that belongs to them. And it's not just like part of the design, but it is their actual trademark. Like you see that, you know what it is. Um, and so uh, a big thing of, of trademarks is a logo. So everybody knows if you see a logo like McDonald's Golden Arches, you don't have to see no words, no letters, no nothing. You know what that is. You could be on the highway, 
and see it, you know that it's McDonald's. So those are the type of things that basically are falling under the area of trademarks. There's also some things like sounds. Um, if you know, um, a is it ABC or NBC? One of them. They have like those the chimes that you that you hear, or um, when you watch a movie and you hear and you see the little floodlights and it's like dun, da, 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 da. yeah so <laughs> that is also a sound mark and you also have to have your your mark for a while or your business for a while so that the public kind of knows the difference and you'll be able to you know file and hopefully protect that if there's no challenge to it so that's basically what what the trademarks are and that oh there we go so i wanted to give you the distinction between your your website name and your um, your website name versus your trademark. So you do not have to have the same name as your, um, you, you do not, your website doesn't have to be obviously the name of your trademark, right? And you also don't have to have your business the same name as your trademark. But if you do get a trademark before you file your website, you should, and you then have a stronger footing to be able to now go after that website. Right. So if you're if you started, um, you know, Amazon.com, let's just say, and somebody else is using it, but you now have the trademark for it. If they're not really using it or they don't have it protected, you can now enforce your rights against theirs and say, nope, I want my trademark because, you know, I have this name protected and you're infringing on my rights. So there was a while where you couldn't do that. And people were just like having you have like these cyber squatters who go and they just buy up different um, websites and you now have your trademark and now they want to sell it to you basically. So in order to avoid that process, um, the laws were kind of changed so that you can now go after people who are just sitting on websites and now trying to, you know, squeeze money out of you because you have the trademark and they know you want it basically. So, so, okay. So that's the difference. So you can, if you do have your trademark, you can now go after the website but if you but you don't have to have the the same name as your website and your trademark and it's not the same thing if you already acquired your website like you got you know um millionaires.com and you're thinking that because you have your website that is going to stop other people from copying your name or using your business name or you know putting out the same products that you have is not going to protect you at all it's just pretty much the address where people could find your website but it doesn't offer you any type of protection so please be mindful um of that somebody asks can i copyright and trademark the same thing for example a logo or a book um so yeah so you can um you can copyright a book right but the name of the book would not be able to be trademarked or copyrighted actually so you could protect the contents, the way that it's set up, the way that the, st the story plays out. All of that can be copyrighted, but the actual name cannot be protected. It's just a function of copyright law. They don't allow you. So that's why you might see movies that have the same names. They may be years apart, um, but you know they have the same names. And you're like, how could you have the same names? Or you might see books that have the same names. They may be you know, by different authors completely, but they have the same names. Now, if you create like... Um, an extension of your book like if you make your your book into a whole movement where you now have the name of your book and you start doing courses and events and products and stuff like that then you'll be able to trademark the name based upon those other things so you'll be able to trademark it for you know your events and your products and your courses etc but you wouldn't be able to trademark the name of the book so I actually have a client who we um we put in her trademark and she she had already she already had like her events that she was doing she was doing like educational um networking courses and she was going into schools and you know being hired to do this in a whole bunch of different places and she um put in for her trademark but she found out that somebody else wrote a book and <laughs> named it the same thing as her as her um sort of like course so she was really, really upset. And so she decided to, you know, go in and do her trademark. And um, and we did that and she was protected. And so now she's building out her courses and kind of like marketing it as a whole, you know, series of different things. And in that way, you can certainly um, protect yourself. But definitely don't wait because people tend to wait because they think it's not going to happen. 
or they're not going to get their um their identity stolen essentially um there was a young lady i don't even know her but i know she had posted um or she did a live and she's well known i just her name is just escaping me but she did a live because she has like this um rental business like i think um party rental business and she um she her name was well known in the industry like people know her and somebody actually went and trademarked her name out of spite and so she was going to fight over it which she could certainly do but don't wait till you're like well known your business is popping and you can't like spend a couple of dollars to invest in securing it because like i said in the beginning that could be worth a lot for you and it could really take you far and you don't want to just leave yourself vulnerable it's like why why build put all your blood sweat and tears into something and then not really own it you know you're just building it basically for somebody else and it's like centuries for centuries i would say you know people of our culture have been creating things have been building things have been inventing things have been designing things and then um someone else owns it because we were not hip to you know how to protect ourselves and so that's you know part of what this is is to just give you the information so that you know that um you know you need to be protecting yourself in these different ways and so for so we talked about the web the difference between the website and the um and your trademark so now what's the difference between your business name and your trademark so your business name is you know um so i'll just say for me so my business name is franco law firm pc i'm a professional corporation now my um i didn't trademark my business name i don't i have my reasons for why <laughs> we're not doing it um but my my persona you know that i'm on um you know every platform with sabine the purpose lawyer i did trademark because i don't want someone else to go out and start using my name um but you don't what i just say that to say that you don't have to have your business name trademarked if it's not the way that people really know you so a lot of people do know franco law firm but they more so know sabine and they more so know sabine the purpose lawyer and so that's why that was more important to me to protect and um, there are there also because it's a law firm there there are a lot of other law firms with that name so I didn't think it was as valuable or as worthy of protection um, but but you know my personal name it is you know and I don't want anybody to even put something similar to that and then you know take take over my goodwill that I have created you know for people who follow me or the people who are interested in my brand so you don't have to have your business name the same as your trademark but it can be you know if I wanted to trademark my business name i could have maybe i would have gotten it but maybe not because there's so many people out there but um but yeah so i just wanted to highlight that for you if anybody has any questions around that just pop it in and i will answer it okay so why do you even apply for a trademark so you should know that if you do um if you've already created like your brand right and you start to Put yourself out there i get this question a lot people want to know should i put myself out there first or should i start um or should i wait should i hold everything you know to the chest and wait till i have it trademarked so the the question that the answer is that it really depends on what you're doing if you are say creating like a you know a clothing brand or you're creating something where you have to go out there and do um massive production like you know warehouse production or you're going to put a lot of money into developing your product or your brand then my thing is that you should trademark it first right you want to make sure that you secure that because you don't want to build a business that you know somebody else owns or maybe you're going to be violating somebody else's rights you know if they own a trademark and you now start to put out this business that they own now you might get sued you know or you might get a letter saying you better stop doing what you're doing and all the money that you put out is now lost right so I would say, you know, if you are thinking about which way you should start, definitely trademark first. If though you are not necessarily um, putting in a lot of a lot of money into your startup cost, then I would say it's good to get started um, because the more notoriety that you have, the better it is. So sometimes people, you know, sometimes you may not have the upfront money to invest to, you know, protect your brand for whatever the reason is, right? So if you don't, I would say, you know, put yourself out there, but as soon as you can, you know, to trademark it. But that's only if you're not putting a lot of money into, you know, development and building out your brand or buying a bunch of product. Definitely, definitely consider that, right? Um, 
I forgot where I was, but anyways, yeah. So we're talking about your business versus your um, your trademark. And you want to also think about where your business is going to reach because you could also not only trademark here in the United States, but you could trademark internationally if your business is, is going to have an international reach. But you definitely have to secure your U.S. trademark first before you go um, before you go out there and try to um, do it internationally. Anybody have any questions? Y'all quiet today. But thank you for watching. All right, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the application process, what we do on our end when, you know, well, you know what, I'll talk about use, right? Um, because a lot of times people don't understand how to use their trademark or how to show that they're using their trademark. And so there's two type of ways that you could apply for your trademark. One is that you are already using it and one is that you're intending to use it. And now if you do it as you are already using it, then you have to show proof of how you're actually using it. Why is that important? <laughs> because it's you're really putting in an application to the federal government and it's, you know, it's a it's a legal process. And also I'll just highlight for you that if you're not doing it yourself, you can't hire a non lawyer to do it for you because it's actually illegal. So if you're planning on trying to cut corners, make sure that it's you doing it because what will happen is if there ever comes a time where your trademark is challenged or you had to defend your trademark or you wanted to enforce your rights, then they could essentially deny your trademark after the fact or you know consider your trademark invalid because you you made some sort of misstatement or some lie or whatever it is in the beginning, right? So we don't want you, we don't want that to happen. So just make sure you do it the right way um in the beginning and so um so the difference between in use and and use so if you're using it you have to show if it's a product you need to show that it's on the product like you have an actual sample you have a label on it that displays either the name or the logo or whatever that you're going to be um using you know whatever you're going to be putting your mark on if it is um say like clothing i get this a lot a lot of people want to um start clothing brands. So if you start a clothing brand, you have to be careful about the placement of your trademark. It can't just be, because we see this all the time, like t-shirts with a big saying on it. And that's common. People just print t-shirts and put sayings on them, right? They can just do that. And so the trademark office doesn't see that as being a, the source of a trademark. They don't see that as being, if I see a t-shirt with, with those words on it, or even if it's a design, I don't necessarily know that it belongs to a particular business. So if you do want to protect your brand and you want to do a trademark um, for a clothing line, you want to place it in certain places. Like, I don't know if you know the brand Polo, how they used to have those collared shirts back in the day. And I mean, I guess they still have them, but they're not as popular, but they have like the little, you know, the horseman here um, that signifies that that's them. So they will accept that versus the big old polo right here. So that doesn't show their trademark. It's not that you can't use it like that, but it doesn't necessarily say this is, you know, my trademark. They won't accept that. Um, you can have it here on the back and the back tag. We have the tag back here. You could have it there or you can have it. Now a lot of companies have like a little, you know, symbol on the, on the shirt sleeve. So those are some, some ways that you can kind of signify how you're using your mark, but you do have to have proof that you're using it. If you don't have proof that you're using it, I wouldn't fake it either, right? So you could just do it as intent to use. And the difference between the two is that when you say I'm intending to use this mark, like I want to reserve this name because I'm about to use it, then you have to keep updating your application every six months or we have to keep updating the applications every six months to say, um, okay, they're not using it yet, but they're still, you know, wanting to secure it. And when you do end up using it, then we can put in that you're actually using it and have it protected um, in that manner. So once that is done, once we have well, I'll say what our what our process is, is that you would then, we would then send out a questionnaire to you, right? So you would engage us, say, hey, I want to do my trademark. Let's have a conversation about it. Um, we'll, I'll talk to you about it. Or you, you would speak to me or somebody from my team and we'll talk about, you know, what, 
what your plans are for your brand and what direction you're looking to go to you're looking to go in and then we'll kind of figure out if you need one mark two marks you know when you should do them you know if we should wait if we should do them all at once if we should do the word mark and the logo mark so we kind of strategize with you around how to start that based upon what your goals are and then once we do that we send you out a questionnaire that you will fill out and kind of say hey this is how i'm using it um that's not what I want to say. <laughs> you would you would give us the information based upon your mark. So you would say the name, you would um, give us the details about your plans, and we would then take that information and translate it into what we need to communicate to the trademark office in order to get your mark going. Then we do what's called a search. So I wanted to say something interesting about the searches because I was talking about um, Jay-Z's brand earlier. So I looked up the actual application. And when I looked up the application, I put in j slash z when i put in j slash z it was just like you know three things came up and i didn't find the actual um filing that i was looking for so i took out the dash and i put jay-z and then it came up so what i wanted to say about that is that we don't just use the uspto's website to do our search because it does not give us accurate findings right so we could search and it could say there's nothing there's nothing out there you're good to go and we could submit it and the trademark office would come back and say, actually, there are a few things. Um, so we don't like to rely on that because it doesn't give us any um, security and it doesn't help us properly advise our clients. So what we do is we do a more extensive search. We use a different algorithm that actually allows us to search not only the trademark office, but to search the state records, to search websites, to search um, social media, to see what's out there. And that way we can give our clients a search report that says these are the things that we found and you know in finding these things um, we think that you should do this or you should do that so we kind of give you some guidance for that and um, and that's basically how the process goes it takes anywhere from 6 to 12 months it could be longer if um, if we have to write a legal argument sometimes despite the search and despite you know all the due diligence the trademark office could come back with something and then we may you know we may need to write a legal argument ar ar around that it doesn't happen as often because of all of the, you know, the work that we do in advance, but it can happen. So we always like to let our clients know that as well. Um, but anyway, it could take from anywhere from six to 12 months. I've seen it take as long as two years, but that's, you know, if, if issues come up and, um, and, but we, you know, we kind of hold our clients' hands all the way to the end. And, um, I'll, and I wanted to actually, do you guys have any questions? I feel like I'm rambling. <laughs> comments questions let me see oh, okay so somebody asks um it's maggie duh <laughs> she asks does your llc name provide any protection rights similar to a trademark so your llc name does not protect you in the way that a trademark protects you right so your llc name is basically registered with the state so whatever state that you are in that your business is formed, that's where your name is registered and your business is formed. Now there, there is state level trademarks, but state level trademarks only protect you locally in the state that you're in. And sometimes they might not even be found and they're not as strong or as protective as federal trademarks. So the LLC name is just the way that your name is registered with your city. Um, it's, with your state it's just the way that your name is going to be recognized when you do your taxes um, for your business that's all that it is it doesn't necessarily stop anyone from using that name except for in the state that you're in so now say you formed your um, LLC in I'll just say New Jersey and you um, and someone else in um, Georgia has another business that's the same exact name they can register it there because each state doesn't look at the other state's records. They don't look to see that, um, you know, somebody in New Jersey already has his name, so you can't start that business. They don't do that. So because of that, you know, anybody in different, you know, different companies in different states can have the same name and nobody's going to stop them from doing that. But the federal trademark office now will stop, you know, anyone in the country from using your name if you register it. So you would then have the right to send a letter or try to enforce that somebody else stop using your name because you have those rights. And that's the point in registering. So actually when you create the mark 
when you start putting it out there, you actually already have a trademark, right? It exists, <laughs> but you can't really police against it or your rights are not as strong unless you register. And that's why you want to register in order to um, be able to enforce or stop somebody else from, from doing it. And the difference between the business name and the, uh, and the trademark name, the other difference is that just the mere fact of you having the business name is not a separate asset. It doesn't, you know, you have your business, your business is an asset as long as it's making you money. Um, but it's not a separate asset. It doesn't hold a separate value. So I, um, I was talking the other day, I forget where it was, but um, the some companies have their, like for instance, I think Google's um, trademark is like $42 billion. I may be wrong on the number, but it's billions. Um, the same as Microsoft, um, the same as like Apple, their trademarks are worth in the billions of dollars. And that's just their trademarks. That's not even the company. That's not even the assets of the company. So it could be a whole, just like you're building a whole nother business, like the look, the feel of the company actually holds a separate value than the actual dollars and cents that you're bringing in on a daily. You know what I mean? Because the name has influence. It can move people. It has followings. You know, aside from social media, it has a following. So that actually moves people and that's where the value is held. So I hope that answers your question. Let me see if there were any others. Trivia, no, that was the same one. Come on, talk to me, y'all. Okay, so th those were all the questions. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to highlight for you the difference between, the, you know, the fact that a trademark is an actual asset. It's a living thing that you want to protect. And it's something that you could also pass on to your family members, to your loved ones. Like, I'm going to talk tomorrow about, about trust and estates and about why you should be thinking that way, why you should be thinking about a will and maybe a trust and some other things. We'll kind of talk about what kind of goes into that, uh, the planning. Um, and some like sort of history about what people have done and the types of issues that have come up through not planning. So I'll talk about that. But um, you got to think about these companies like Walmart that's been around for like hundreds of years, I believe. <laughs> Don't get me to lie. Um, Walmart that's been around for hundreds of years and, you know, other companies that's been around like Coca-Cola's had their trademarks for um, a couple hundred years. I think they started early 1900s or even in the 1800s they've been around for a while and they've owned you know their trademarks since you could own trademarks and so that's something that's passed down you know what i mean that name is very valuable and so they buy other brands now that pop up and they just slap their name on it and now that brand is selling you know what i mean so it's like it it, it, it speaks to you get to communicate basically to your people the, the the history of the company the quality of the company the integrity of the company you know how where you could find the company the types of things that the company will provide to you i don't know if you guys are like this but sometimes i find companies i, I find products and i don't know the company and then i don't feel comfortable because i'm like if this does something to me then who am i gonna sue because i have no idea who this is so you want to be able to it and and the purpose of the trademark really from the government's perspective is to protect the public. They want to make sure that the public doesn't get screwed over by brands. They want to make sure the public doesn't get hurt by brands so that they know who to go back to, right? So they know who to go back. They know who to go back to and how they can actually um you know, be protected essentially. And I think that's all that I have. If you don't want to talk to me, you don't want to jump on with me. <laughs> That's, um, that's pretty much it. So if you guys have questions, you could put them in, you could, um, you know, you could message me and I'll, you know, put up some posts. Let me just see. No, I don't do double closings. I don't do wholesale deals anymore. Thank you so much for liking the content. Uh, someone's starting an LLC. Good job. I just love how, you know, um, everyone's just so motivated as far as our, our culture right now, everyone's so motivated wanting to, you know, start businesses, start a side hustle, because we kind of see how the, 
basically the government has no love for us right so we do have this whole stimulus package we do have you know some things that were put in place because of this pandemic but at the end of the day when we have these recessions that come up it's really everybody's for self so if you don't start to think about another avenue if you don't start to look at the gifts that you have that you could actually use and put into play and make some money for yourself then you might get caught out there where you know you end up losing your job god forbid and then you're just like how am i gonna make a living when thousands of people lo just lost their job so i really want you guys to be thinking about what you have as far as creativity you might be already doing something every day or in your regular life that you do all the time that you could be getting paid for and this is not about looking for something to sell it's about something that you're already doing that <laughs> you could actually be getting paid for because it's valuable to people and people actually would pay you to actually do those things i don't know if my sister's still on here but she um really inspired me because she has been working out forever like as far as long as i can remember she's always been fit she used to run track she used to um you know do track and field and all that stuff and been really consistent at working out and people and she would post her workouts and she would post you know about um being fit and you know whatever all that stuff not whatever but you know what i mean and then so recently she started doing um she got her license to train um she started working at a gym then the pandemic happened then she started, you know, training people online and people coming to her house to be trained and doing classes. And so this is something that she was just already doing. You know, it's a skill that she acquired. She was doing it out of the joy for it and she was already doing it. So you may have something like that that you're already doing. Could be baking pies. Maybe you, you got your own patty pies recipe or maybe you're just like, you know, really good at, um, you know creating things that are cute and people like them and they're always like oh i wish i had it or maybe you're good at styling whatever it is we all have something so just think about what that is that you have try to tap into it and um so that you know you can actually have a side hustle for yourself you don't have to quit your job that's not what i'm saying but have a backup plan that's yours um someone was asking for llc's s corp and c corp so on Thursdays, thank you because I know you put that in the comments. On Thursday, I'm going to be talking about business and um, we'll, we'll get into that. So we'll talk about running your business right. We'll talk about the different types of business entities. I don't want to give you, I don't want to be all over the place. So <laughs> I'll give you, you know, um, the trademarks for today. And on Thursday, we'll get back on, I'll be on tomorrow talking about trust in the States and I'll be on Thursday talking about um, business, all things business. So again, I'll be posting that I'm going to be on. So if you have certain things that you want me to talk about, put it up and I'll make sure that I get to it. All right. Hey, Tisha. Thank you. So if that's it, no more. If you guys don't have any more questions, I am going to see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me, for sticking with me. You guys are my strong 25 that's been in here with me. So I appreciate you guys and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good night.